They said sugar is the worst thing for your skin. Mm. They said even more than smoking. And I was like, wow, wow. Um, and it really what you eat on the daily. Many, many people in our society, they eat because they're lonely, bored, sad, frustrated, depressed, you know, all the things when that's going to lead to, well, a lot of unhappiness in your body for the worst time. And the statistics are something like when people fall, it's because they lose their balance. 60% of them, I never woke up the next day going, I feel great. Not once. Yeah, I think that also our society has made it too easy. It could be literally 100 push-ups a day. Wow, I didn't even think of that. When you come in, keep your elbows close to your body, and that gets more of the back part of your arm. And it's not just you, Carolyn. Women are not born with upper body strength. We could crush people with our legs, but yeah. upper body strength, we can pick up kids and groceries, but inherently, we don't do a lot of pushing motion as women. We do a lot of- Welcome to the Life on Purpose Over 40 podcast, where empowerment, elegance, and health take center stage. I'll be your guide on this thrilling journey to outshine your past self. This is a podcast all about transformation. We're plunging headfirst into exactly what health, wellness, style, relationships, and career look like as a woman over 40. You'll be hearing from all the most sought after global trailblazers and experts. This isn't just about learning. It's about embracing your inner, fierce, fabulous self. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm very, very, very excited today. I have the absolutely gorgeous Pam Sherman with me. So Pam, welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited for today. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. So um, since I came across you, you have become my inspiration. I've been watching your Instagram and I look at you and I think, oh my God, you have just got anyone listening or watching. And if you haven't seen, you can't see a lot of your body right here. But um, if you haven't seen Pam's Instagram, you need to go and check her out because you've just got like this body that's just incredible and you've got these arms to die for. <laughs> so it's fantastic. You are my inspiration. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. That, I did not know that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I think that um, I never had this thing about great arms when I was younger. I was always that person that was like, oh, I don't like big muscles because I, it's too muscly. But now since I've been like in my late 30s into my 40s, I'm like, yeah, muscles on uh, like women look fantastic. And um, you definitely you talk the talk like you definitely you have the body for what you um what you promote and I think that's something that you know you see a lot of these people out there going oh go and get fit but they're not fit themselves so it's and really arm yes arms are something that women like I remember a teacher in high school writing on the chalkboard and her arm was like so low and I'm like I never want that <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I had my child, I was 40 when I was pregnant with my daughter. And um, I had those arms that when I was in my 20s and um, my 30s, that I had those arms that didn't matter how much weight I put on. Not that I ever put on much, but my arms never got big. So I always like, my friends were always like, you're so skinny. And I'm like, I'm actually carrying a couple of kilos now, but my arms is where like I never showed it. But when I was pregnant and then I actually found out straight after I um, had my daughter that I was actually going through perimenopause, like literally, yeah, yeah, it was like directly like within six months I was going through perimenopause. And so now like, and now what I've learned it is it's, you know, your hormones and like your muscles start getting weaker and my arms, I'm like, oh my God, the thing about me that I love the most is like the worst thing now. So I'm extra, extra like um, appreciative of great arms. Thank you. One thing I tell women all the time, which sounds so crazy, but every time you're in the kitchen, you could do kitchen counter push-ups. So say you did 10 every time you're in the kitchen. If we're all in the kitchen 10 times a day, 15 times a day. That could be literally a hundred push-ups a day. And I think women are all or nothing. So like if they don't get an hour workout in, why bother? But guess what? A hundred push-ups a day makes a difference. Wow. I didn't even think of that. And because I've got this thing, I'm really bad at push-ups because I don't have that arm strength. I don't know why. I was a hairdresser and I still don't have it. I don't know why. But on the counter, you just sort of have that less of a resistance, but you still get a lot out of it. Yes. And wide arms works your chest more, arms close in works more your triceps. So when you come in, keep your elbows close to your body and that gets more of the back part of your arm. And it's not just you, Carolyn. Women are not born with upper body strength. 
we could crush people with our legs, but yeah. upper body strength, we can pick up kids and groceries, but inherently we don't do a lot of pushing motion as women. We do a lot of pulling and lifting up. Oh. So it's not just you, it's every woman. Uh, so yeah, the kitchen counter is accessible. Everybody can do it. If that's too hard, you can do it against a wall. That's a great yeah. place to start. But literally put a sticky note wherever you go in the kitchen. Like if you're waiting for your coffee or your almond milk, to, you know, yeah, yeah. anything, <laughs> Put like 15 push-ups as a reminder, and you can do that every time you're in. And that's you're just building strength little by little. I love that. So I've been doing this podcast, I think I'm at episode around 20. And I have to say, I love all my guests, but that is actually the best <laughs> piece of advice I think I've ever had in my life from anyone ever. Because no, seriously, because <laughs> it's so true. Like it's doing 10 or 15 of those. And it's not like strenuous because I think, you know, you hear this, do 20 jumping jacks while you're waiting. And I'm like, oh, jumping jacks. But I think um, push-ups is not so strenuous. Well, no, you could be in your jammies, jumping jacks, you need a jog bra, you need shoes on. <laughs> you're not going to get sweaty by doing 10 or 15. Or, and as you keep doing them, it might get to 20 or 25. Yeah. And it'd be nice to keep a little check mark every day. and like, oh, I got to 50 today or you know, whatever. Oh, I got to 100 today. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a doable step for any woman, especially working at home because, you know, you go water, coffee, tea, make lunch. Oh, I love that. That is fantastic. Oh, I can't wait because <laughs> it's now winter. So the good thing is by the time it gets to summer, I think I'm going to have incredible arms. So thank you. So in, arms in. Arms in. My arm. Yes. Fantastic. And go slowly, go slowly. When you go quickly, that uses more momentum. Like one, one thousand, two, one thousand. You could put your favorite song on, do it to the beat of the music. But yes, slow and, and steady. There's actually another question that I can ask you then. So yes. I'm going. I just started at the gym back at the gym recently, and I've been using the leg press. And the guys, whenever there's like four of these machines next to each other, and every time I'm there, I go really slowly with it, and because I've got bad knees anyway. And then everyone next to me is always like, duh, 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 and I'm like. Am I doing it wrong? Should I be doing it faster or? You're doing it right. They probably have more weight on and they have to go fast to be able to do it. No okay. offense to guys. They like to hit a certain number. Okay. So they leg press 300 pounds, but they really didn't because they couldn't probably get, they're not probably doing a full range of motion. Okay. They're going too fast. Anything you do fast, you're using more momentum than actual engaging your muscle. Okay. So for women, we're meant to be building our muscle up. Because my understanding is bigger muscles means that the muscle is burning the fat more. That's what's going on of why we're actually putting on weight. It's not the fact that everyone says we just hold fat more. But generally, it's actually that the muscle is not breaking down the fat. So, I'm sorry. What's your question? <laughs> I was confused. So because as women, we all say, oh, I got older and suddenly I'm just putting on more weight. But it's actually because our muscles are not um, not big anymore. And as they get smaller, they need to be bigger to help break down the fat. That's my understanding. I think as women get older, they get less active. If you look at your life yeah. now versus your life in your twenties, we were probably all walking a lot more, a lot busier where it's easier to be sedentary as you get older. And unless you dedicate time for your workouts and strength training, because we are all losing muscle after the age of 40. And muscle is our metabolic currency, and it's what does drive calories during the day. So, so many women think, if I lift, I'm going to get huge, bulky muscles, and that, is, that that literally will never happen to anybody. You burn more during the day, the more muscle you have. Yeah. So, it's a um, it's one of the biggest myths that I can't take, because I think, in fact, I get Arnold Schwarzenegger's newsletter every day, and okay. he brought it up in one of his newsletters, and he said, I, it's actually the I laugh at that because it's taken me thousands upon thousands of thousands of hours to get work to where I am. You know, people, please pick up more than a five pound dumbbell. You can pick up a 20 pound dumbbell. Your muscles are not going to pop. It takes so much time in the gym and so much extra food to actually build. Big, I've actually never seen a woman with big bulky muscles. So, and I've been doing this 27 years. So please, ladies, please strength train. You'll be able, your body's going to be in a better shape physically. Your shape is better and you burn more calories during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I had that exact same mentality until about a year or two ago that I was like, I don't want to look like one of those bodybuilders. But yeah, now I, I'm lifting way more kilos. Way. And I, you look beautiful. You're not a big body, but you're beautiful. 
No, but I don't do enough yet. Like looking at your account, I definitely, I don't do enough. I'm going like one to two times a week. I definitely need to go more. And I'm going to ask you in a minute about motivation as well. So I'm going to get there. Let's just go into that a little bit more. What's actually the best way to exercise for long-term health? Strength training is going to be the key to longevity. Because we lose muscle as we age, um, it is a, it's a, such a bad thing in our society. I, you hear about older people falling. You might know a family member that's fallen. Our muscles protect our bones. So our muscles are vital for longevity. Again, it's not to be the big bulky bodybuilder. None of us are going to get there. It's to protect our bones. So yes, you burn more calories, but it's really the older I get, I'm 56. You know, when I was in my forties, I would want to crush you in a workout, Carolyn. I just want you to be so sore. I just want to get you. Now I'm like, can you please strength train? Because I want you to be vital as you age. I want you in 40 years to be as vital as you are now to pick up your grandkids. If you have grandkids to go to the beach, to take vacations. Yeah. And the strength, strength training is so huge as is balance. Many people fall over because they can't balance and it balance like strength. We lose that as we age. So it could be as easy as when you're in your kitchen doing your kitchen counter push-ups, if you put one hand behind your back and one arm out front to touch a chair with one leg, so like a teeter-totter, right? Practicing balance is going to be huge because that is something we lose. And so many people say to me, oh my gosh, my balance is terrible. I said, Do you work on it? No. It's not glamorous. It's not exciting. It doesn't burn calories, but it really does help for your longevity and flexibility. Again, stretching is not glamorous, but your body craves uh, it could be yoga, just regular stretching. It doesn't have to be an hour. You know, a few minutes after a workout is, is really, really important. Yeah, everything you say there is so true. So I started to, after I had my daughter, I tried to get back into working out a lot. And I spent like four or five weeks really working out hard. And then I was like, I didn't do any stretching at all. And suddenly I just couldn't move. <laughs> so now I've got this rule that I have to like at least one day a week, I'm just stretching. So yeah. And it's not that it has to be for a long time. And then I try to stretch like at least three times a week. And it's for me, I don't like that slowness, slowness. So it's something that I've had to force on myself because I know some people like that idea of yoga and to me, I'm like, ugh, too boring for me. Well, after your workouts, go to my YouTube channel, Pam Sherman. I have a whole stretching playlist. I have short ones, like two or three minutes up to long ones, 10 to 12 minutes, a little stretch after every workout, especially because you just work so hard. So I always say stretching is like dessert for your muscles. And who doesn't like dessert? I mean, come on. And it feels so good when you're done. Yeah. And it does make a difference. It it definitely does make a difference. And, um, balancing because balancing is something that I have, I've also realized. I remember I actually saw a woman at the gym. I remember before I was pregnant and she was standing on one of those, um, round. The BOSU. Yeah. And she was so amazing on it. And I remember I was with my stepdaughter who she was about 16 at the time. And we were both standing there going, this woman is incredible. And she would have been around, I don't know, 60 years old. So we were both like, this woman is incredible. And I remember that day thinking that, and for what you're saying, like that is what will make a difference. And I always thought since then, I have to make sure I balance at all, like practice my balance. And some people say, you know, stand on one foot while you're drying your hair. I, I personally have to do one thing at a time. Yeah. But if that works for you while you're brushing your teeth, if that works, great. But getting in once to twice a week of balance work would be great. At the end of the workout, when you're tired, that's a great time to do it because sometimes we're tired. Uh, so, yes, yeah. when you see older people that are just cr- like crushing it in a different way, it, it's so inspiring. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that we, we sit there thinking, oh, we'll do it later. We'll, we'll get onto that. Oh, balance. Yeah. Once I start noticing that I've lost my balance, then I'll start doing it. And that's probably the worst time to do it. Probably the worst time. And the statistics are something like when people fall, it's because they lose their balance. Mm -hmm. 60% of them end up dying within 60 years over the age of 75. That's crazy. It's crazy. And, And to all of us now, it seems very, like a very long way away. If we are lucky enough, we'll get there, right? It, yeah. That's not that, I mean, I guess it depends how old you are listening to this, but it's really not that, If it's not that far away. No, and look, everyone listening is over 40. And I think we have to realize that, you know, that first 40 years of our life, we got to 40 and went, hang on a second, that went pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, where did it go, right? Yeah. 
So the next 40 years is actually not that, you know, it's not that far away. Um, And that's really what this podcast was about, was to get people like you for that exact reason of what can we do today that can make a difference. So um, let's just break that down a little bit about exercising because um, we talk about weight, lifting weight, or well, weight strength training. What about doing things like um, elastic bands? Like is that, does that come under strength training? So using the, I don't know what you call them, the yeah, the, yeah, the bands. Uh, yeah, that works. I would say at least once a week would be great to actually lift weight to get stress mm-hmm. on your body. Bands are great. They're great for when you travel um, because they fold up in your suitcase really easily. But our bodies are meant to work hard. And the pressure that weights put on your muscles, that's going to be what protects your bones. So it really is important. At least once a week, twice a week would be great. Um, And if you absolutely hate it, then get a trainer, get your best friend, go to the gym, do it with somebody that you like. So it'll be way more fun. But I cannot stress many women in my age group I love Pilates. They just love Pilates. And like, because it's comfortable. You actually need to be uncomfortable to be, to to get your optimal health. Yes, Pilates is great. Yes, yoga is great. But you definitely need some time under tension with some, you know, heavy dumbbells or some, you know, safely, of course. And if you don't know how to do it, again, a trainer, a gym, a best friend, go to your local gym. I just had coffee with a girlfriend who said, yeah, she loves this gym. They do uh, she's called it CrossFit light. So nothing crazy, nothing dangerous, but she, you know, her 6am girls are her friends. They go for coffee afterwards. Like there's so many different ways you can do it. It does not have to be a chore. Yeah. And what about doing it at home? What's the getting some weights? Most people are not motivated to work out at home. Uh, when I, my, one of my very first jobs was working at a health club as a salesperson. And my trainer said 95% of people who buy workout equipment at home do not use it. Most treadmills end up as a clothes hanger. Um, If you are motivated, yes, yes, make a home gym, do it, have so much fun with it. If you know, at this age, you should know yourself really well. If you know you're not going to do it at home, please find a good gym. Please find a friend that will do it with you. Please find a class that you like to do. It really comes down to motivation. And I have not met a lot of uh, women in my life that like to work out enough that they make their home gym and they're like, yes, I love it. Um, And if that's you, amazing. And if not, find that right place that's that's going to give you a great workout yeah so um then you're going to have all the women that say i don't have time to go to the gym what's your we all make time for things that we want to do we all make time for things we want to do uh if you cannot make it to a gym i have a 10 minute playlist on my youtube channel just for that reason because i got so sick of women saying that 10 minutes is better than no minutes every day of the week. And I feel like I said this before, women are all or nothing. And in my career, when I first started teaching classes, every class was an hour. So I think many women in my age group, 40 to 60, think I have to work out for an hour. But when you put 10 minutes in first thing in the morning, your whole day goes better. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, body weight is better than zero exercise. So I think you create what you want to create. If you don't have time during the week because you commute, and that's a real thing when women commute, so you, you walk on your breaks, you do a couple body weight workout videos, and on the weekends, you actually go to a gym and make the harder workouts happen. But, you know, are you on TikTok? Are you, which is so fun. Oh my gosh. The animal videos. I just can't stop with those. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, like we all spend time doing stuff, like the fluffy stuff. When you want to create a change in your life, you will make it happen. Sorry, that's hardcore, but. No, it is so true. Yeah. And I, I want to talk about food as well, but let's talk about um, mindset for a second because <clears throat> this is actually a good time to talk about. It's something that I wanted to bring up because for me personally, since I started going through perimenopause and I got really, really ill for about three or four months where it was really bad and I got motivation has been not what it used to be for me. So yeah. now it's like, yeah, I still go to the gym. I actually work out at home and I'm actually, yeah, a lot of people are like, how do you do that? But I don't mind it. I actually do. I like it, but the, I've just had too much of this on and off that I've never had before. So yeah. How do I get around that mindset of do it and do it consistently? Cause I think that's my problem is I'm not consistent enough anymore. You have to make your health a habit, like brushing your teeth. Yeah. None of us when we were little yeah. kids wanted to brush our teeth. Floss, who liked to floss when they were little? Nobody did. 
it has to be a part of your day most days of the week because these these old girls are going to take us to the end of our lives and what how you take care of yourself now your future self is on the sidelines going please work out please eat better you know please sleep more please do some more walks it matters right now what we're doing so when people say i don't want to i'm not motivated and like you have to it, it can be the bare minimum. It can be 10 minutes a day, but it has to be something. So it's going to be a habit because you can't wait for motivation. Most people don't have a lot of motivation. It has to be today. I'm going to, and guess what? Our YouTube, besides my channel, there's thousands of other people on there. Like I'm going to do a 10 minute core workout. Amazing. That's better than nothing. So I would say, put it in your calendar or the night before decide what time of day you're going to do it. Put it in your calendar. You cannot break an appointment with yourself and make it happen. Okay. So you make me feel better because I actually, I do do at least like I go for a walk every day or I go like, I try to get like yesterday, I didn't have time to go to the gym. So I just did like a 10 minute quick workout here. Um, so I, I'm doing something every day and I'm trying to eat as healthy as possible. Like I have a few days where I'm like, Oh, I probably shouldn't have eaten that, but generally I eat really healthy, but I think I want to take it to that next level. So I really need to take it to that level where like when I look at you and I'm like oh my god like your body is amazing and like I said I want the muscles in my arms I want my body to look and you can see that you feel as good as you look and I think that's the part that you know I want to have that feeling that every day I wake up going yeah I actually feel as amazing as you vibrantly look all the time so I think there's more to it for me than just that 10 minutes a day I think I've got to take it to that next level well, and it's sleep. Sleep is my number one on my health list because we all know when we get a bad night's sleep, when you're a mom, when you're in perimenopause, sleep can come and go. I mean, you wake up with a hot flash. Yeah. Whew, and the next day, you're not going to want to work out. You're not going to want to make a salad. You want, you cra- Your brain craves sugar when you're tired. So mm. sleep, definitely number one. Um, coffee definitely is a food group, but women need to drink more water. <laughs> not mm. hydrated enough. Um, and that shows in our skin, too. I was listening to a podcast with two ladies who made a skincare company. They said sugar is the worst thing for your skin. Mm. They said even more than smoking. And I was like, wow, wow. I've never forgotten that. Um, And really what you eat on the daily. Many, many people in our society, they eat because they're lonely, bored, sad, frustrated, depressed, you know, all the things when that's going to lead to, well, a lot of unhappiness in your body. Really, you want to eat for health for the most part, not including holidays and birthdays, not, you know, but for the most part, yeah. eating for your health and for feeling great, that makes a huge difference. I've overeaten a gazillion times. I never woke up the next day going, I feel great. Yeah. Not once. Yeah, I think that also our society has made it too easy. So I think yeah. we, as much as it's our own fault, doing it to ourselves but seeing what we see around us like it's so much easier to pick up and I was telling you before we got on this call that I've had so many stomach issues and I grew up in a Polish home where my mum cooked everything like we grew up with really traditional food um so I grew up you know never having processed food and then having all my food allergies I never ate processed food so I'm just not a processed food person and so for me even like Last week I was with my daughter and I was like, I just have to grab something quickly for dinner because we're really in a rush. So I grabbed like pre-made uh, cooked, uh, sorry, raw pasta, but like the fresh pasta in the packet. Yeah. I was in the supermarket and then I was like, oh, they right next to it, they have all the pasta sauces, you know, you've got the different ones. And I was like, I'm just going to grab one of those because I'm just not going to like, and I never grab them because I'm always like, I'll just rather throw together my own mushrooms and put some cream on top of them and make my own sauce that way, even if it's yeah. like, a basic sauce but I'll just throw that together I was like I'll just buy that packet because it's just going to be so much easier tonight and it was the most terrible thing I've ever tasted and I realized that once you get into eating homemade food like even if it's basic homemade food like your salad's fantastic like your basic and I love your we'll talk about your recipes but your recipes are all like very very short recipes you don't have this like let's stand in the kitchen for three hours to make something that like ends up being a piece of lettuce Your, your recipes are super simple and once you get into that routine of eating fresh food that's like one ingredient food that's not processed then it's really hard to go back to 
store bought stuff. And I think women need to, and I hear so many women say to me, how do you do it? How do you cook? And it's like, well, once you've tasted good food, it's really hard to eat that other stuff. It, it really is. And your taste buds acclimate to the processed yeah. foods and the food companies are wanting you to have more. So they make it the perfect amount of fat, sugar, and salt. So you're like, Ooh, but you can't just have one as a slogan for a reason. Yeah. Then we yeah. can have just one chip. You want 50 chips. Well, maybe not 50, but you know what I mean? So, and it's not, I, I don't, I'm not a expert cook by any means, but I do a lot of, you know, protein and veg. I don't do fancy. Last night I threw a tri-tip in the crock pot. I had to go teach a step class, made a big salad for my family and that, and roasted some potatoes. Like that, that was it. It wasn't crazy hard. Um, you, you can make it easy. I feel like though, there's a lot of pressure as a woman to make the perfect meals, have the perfect outfit, look, per- you know, do everything perfect. And when, you know what, it, that, that's a fallacy that you don't have to do that at all. No, no, but looking after your body from the inside is actually way more important. And I'm like a really avid cook. So for me, it's like, I've got the steam oven I've got the, you know, I do this, like I've got a, a sous vide machine. So I like sous vide all my meats and blah, blah, blah. But I also don't have time to do that all the time, especially since I've had my daughter. So now it's like, yeah, I just get a piece of salmon, throw it on a pan and you'll get some salad on the side of it. And that's our dinner. And at the end of the day, like I go from these like amazing gourmet meals that take me four hours to cook (laughs) to throwing together something, because for me, that is still better than buying something processed. So, you know, my stepkids, my, with my partner, his stepkids, when I started cooking for them, they were horrified from the food I cooked. And they used to just smell it and go, I'm not eating that. And I'm like, you have to at least try it. And then we got this like little, I've spoken about it on the podcast that we ended up with a rule of um, they're allowed to have one food they hate so they don't never have to eat. So if it's tomatoes or if it's whatever. And if I cook something, there was four of them. And if at least two of them didn't like it, I'll never cook it again. But they all had to at least try it. That was the rule. It ended up being the daughter that hated everything from the beginning. She was the youngest. She never in seven years has come up with a actual food she won't eat. So we gave them like they can change it every six months. So then on the first day, one of them's like, I don't like fish. The other one was like, I don't like red peppers, bell peppers. And the boy didn't like at the time he was feeling sick from eggs. But the girl, she never got around to anything. So every time we tried to, we would eat, she'd say, I don't want to eat this because I don't like this food. I go, it's not on your list. And she's like, okay, then should eat it. And I'm like, do you want to put it on your list today? She's like, no, I'll still think about it. So she ended up, now she eats everything and she loves all food. And that was all just wow. like for my little thing. And they've gone from eating like a lot of processed food to now like being happy to try anything and eating everything. So um, yeah, it's, I, I, if I could make those four children <laughs> like, like different foods, then I'm sure anyone can do it. How lucky they are to have you because a lot of people, you know, they do the chicken nuggets. And I did when my kids were very little, when I didn't know any better, you know, the easy, like, well, they'll only eat this. When I hear that, I'm like, no, 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 no. You have to make them try other things. Of course, I want chicken. My daughter's at that age now. She's trying it. It's so hard. I won't eat that. I'm like, okay, then don't eat it. And she's like, oh, good. Okay. I'm just taking that off you or I'm not letting you watch TV. Oh, okay. I'll eat it then. (laughs) You just have to force them, yeah. So you have good consequences. No TV. Yeah, yeah I've seen. I've had friends of mine that are like, my child mm. only each, like I don't know, like whatever one food, and I'm like, oh, I don't think it works like that. But okay. Um, yeah, but let's not judge other people's parenting no. No. skills. <laughs> no, 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 no. At the end of the day, I think getting your children to try different foods is really important. I think we as like adults as well, and. You know, I think you and I are good at it, but I know a lot of friends of mine that are like, oh, it's just sometimes easier to get that packaged food and the rubbish that's in there. And with my stomach allergies, I, oh. I read everything and it's horrifying what's in food. When my kids were little, I remember being at Target with them and my son picked up a box of cereal and he's like, can we get this? And I said, if you can read me the ingredient list, yes. He only got like six words in and then he couldn't pronounce it. I said, well, if you can't pronounce it, we're not going to get it. And he was like, okay, that was it. <laughs> that's really good my daughter asked me the other day for food this the cereal and I haven't looked at cereal for I don't know 20 years or something I was like oh yeah maybe and I picked them all up and I was like huh no huh and the ones that were like healthy 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 I'm like hang on this has more sugar in it than the one that's not healthy like it's terrible 
people. They lie too on the front of the the yeah. boxes. They li- heart healthy. No, actually, it. Uh, I'll stop. Yes, yes. When you read the label, it is astonishing mm-hmm. what they have in there. And so you've got a recipe book. Let's talk about that for a second. So okay. I've done quite a few of your recipes and your sauces because I've got this thing about. I grew up in a Polish house where, you know, we eat a lot of butter. We live for butter. Um, we eat a lot of fatty things. And so finding healthy alternatives, we were talking about your coleslaw salad because I grew up with, you know, coleslaw is like mayonnaise and sour cream. So you've got an amazing recipe for um, a coleslaw that's got almond milk in it. And we were discussing that earlier, but I did a few other recipes, your peanut sauce um, recipe as well to die for because I um, love peanut sauce and yeah, sometimes it gets a little bit unhealthy. Uh, what else did I try? I've got a list somewhere of what the I pistachio actually... sauce. You tried yes, that? that? That one. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that one so much. Yeah. And I think because it's got in there, um, uh, coriander, is that what you call it in the U S coriander? Cilantro. Cilantro. Uh, some people don't like that, but you can put something else in, in its place. Like basil would work. Dill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're fantastic. Uh, do you have a link to that or I just leave a link in the show notes? Is there because it's a Google sheet? I, um, I would Let say put it in the show notes. Yeah, put it in the show notes, please. I'll I, put it in I'm... the show notes. And anyone listening or watching, you have to try these recipes. And the thing that's the best about them is that they're all like pretty short. Like some of the sauces were a little bit longer, but still like – they're worth it because you can make the sauce and then you can put it in the fridge. But they're like the recipes are super quick. They're they're just a bit flavorful. And I think that's the part that we get stuck on is oh, I don't want something boring and I don't want to just eat something that's like tastes like rabbit food. And especially with family, I think that that's one of the things people worry about is, oh, my husband and my kids are never going to eat it. But I think your recipes are spot on. Well, thank you. I did borrow the pistachio recipe from our local newspaper. And I, in the beginning, only used it on stir fries. I'm like, why don't I put this on my coleslaw or on a green salad? I mean, it's really good. It would be good on pasta. I mean, it's... Fish tacos. I did the fish tacos because I'm obsessed with fish tacos. So Amazing. Thank you for trying them. Yes. No, 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 no. Thank you because it was definitely (laughs) delicious. I want to ask you um, also, I was talking to you about... Oh, no, let's go. Let's talk about food a little bit more. So um, your recipes are there, but what else would you recommend? So we're talking about, you know, all the unhealthy stuff, but what should women do when it comes to eating well? Women need to eat more protein. Mm. We are carb lovers by nature. I mean, give us a good sourdough bread bowl and butter and, mm. Mm. Uh, but because we are losing muscle as we age, we need to eat more protein to fuel our muscles. And that is not, does that does not come naturally for women. So I would say every time you eat, you want to get at least 25 grams. And if you don't know what that, uh, that's an American, I don't know what, Yeah, yeah. Um, get a food scale and measure it out. So that's going to really eliminate having cereal for breakfast, having just a sandwich for lunch. You got to have probably four to six ounces of meat on your sandwich, not just pasta. You got to have the meatballs with your pasta. So it really makes women think like, oh, Instead of a carb-based meal, it's going to be what's my protein and then what's going to be on the side. Mm-hmm. And more vegetables. We, we all need more fiber. We all need more fiber in our lives. It acts as little scrub brushes in your vessels. It keeps you full. And I say I have a I try to show pictures of my BAS, big ass salad every day um, because it's just we all need to eat more things grown from the ground. And, and uh, it, you feel full. You feel happy. You feel good afterwards. With my yummy dressings, oh, my gosh, it makes it so easy. Yeah, definitely. And so you told me beforehand that you don't eat um, any uh, lack. You don't have lactose. So no, you no milk or. But do you have meat? Do you eat meats or? Yes. Yeah. It's just I have low thyroid, and I know with thyroid you should stay away from gluten and dairy. I do love a little bit of half and half in my coffee, but besides that, we have non-dairy cheese. We have uh, goat cheese and sheep cheese, and yep, all sorts of meat. I don't like fish, which is embarrassing as a health professional, but I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> Really? Not even salmon? Like, because some people oh. like salmon. No? Oh. Oh. Shrimp. Okay. Shrimp and lobster tail, yes. But th- I've tried. Okay. I've tried for so. years because my kids and my husband love it. And I'll take a bite and I'm like, oh. I can't. My whole life, and you're I in California, never liked it. So if you don't like it in California, then yeah, because I'm sure that you have amazing fish over there. In, well, I know. I've been to California. so We've gone to Hawaii. Amazing. 
we, I mean, we travel. We all, you know, and I, I was a picky as a kid, but I have tried salmon probably 20 times and I just have the stink face every time I try it. So yeah. I got to give up on that. No, but it's probably something like with people with cilantro <laughs> that they actually have that taste that tastes disgusting to them. So that it tastes like soap to them, which is so yeah, interesting, right? Very, yeah. It's weird, yeah. And I love it. Like I can put it on everything. So <laughs> you and but that and dill I could put on everything. Oh my yes. god. I get a big bunch every time I go to the store. Okay, so when we meet, I'm gonna make you some Polish food because Polish people <laughs> like dill is like the number <sighs> one thing. And my partner doesn't like dill. <laughs> yes, so please. It's actually, yeah, it's quite <laughs> hilarious. He's like, Are you putting dill on that? So I had to like calm down with the dill because I'm like, I could literally put dill on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So there's a Vietnamese meal. This is actually great. Anyone listening, if you like Vietnamese food, I can't remember the name of it, but there's, oh no, it's fish. Forget it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there's like this famous Vietnamese dish that I found when I was in Vietnam once. And it's actually based on dill, but they put like a kilo of dill on top of it. And but it's white fish with it. And it's like with a chili, but you don't think of Vietnamese food to have dill. Like it's no. not a, I've been like in Asian countries, you don't think of dill. So it was like this really unusual combination in Vietnam. But um, yeah, dill is one of my favorite things. And Sorry. herbs are, dill is one of my favorite things. And herbs are actually really good. So I don't know how much you um, look at vegetables. Um, there's a guy in the US that I was watching. I followed him for a while. He's got an app called Zoe. I don't know if you've heard of that one. No. He's got this app and it's about taking, measuring your sugar levels. So they, okay. they measure your sugar. And he's like on all these, like I've seen him on lots of different podcasts and he talks about all, like you should eat 30 different vegetables a week. I've so there's that. this concept, yeah. Um, and you might actually know who he is. He's some doctor, I can't remember his name. But what they say is that herbs come under that as well and four herb servings comes up to one vegetable so if you have four different herb servings that's the equivalent of one vegetable because some people are saying to me how can you eat 30 different vegetables a week but it's actually you know if you put some like pepper comes under it as well so that's a quarter of a serving if you garlic like, right, yeah and they all come under it so if you think of it like that it's actually not that hard to eat a lot of different variety yeah yeah it seems uh, undaunting to do that, right? Or daunting to, to get that many in. But if you think if, if that makes people eat two more a week, that's great. Or five more a week, that's great. And think, let's get past the potatoes as a vegetable. Let's get some color into your vegetables. That would be amazing. And that's, that's even if you love potatoes, which being Polish, I love potatoes. Even if you love potatoes, just um, mixing up your different potatoes already adds like you've got a standard white potato, but you can have a red skin potato, you can have a purple skin. And those alone, like just mixing up your potatoes and sweet potato, white sweet potato, purple sweet potato, just mixing up the different potatoes alone has already changed that variety. And that's something that I think of like, you know, I love potatoes, so I'm, I try not to eat too many. But I try to also mix up my potatoes as well for that reason. Amazing. Love it. Yeah. So I want to ask you a question. I've kept you for so long. I want to ask you a question that I ask all of my guests. Okay. So I want to know what are three tips that you give everyone that's listening or watching about life? What do you recommend that they should do with themselves? I think they should give themselves more grace every single day. Mm. many women over the years, the first thing they say to me is I hate whatever body part or they, you know, they diss themselves. Women need to love themselves every single day. They have to be thankful for their health and themselves because these old girls have done through a lot. They've gone through a lot. They've birthed kids. They've lost people, right? I mean, so showing yourself grace and love every day, I think has to be high on everybody's list before you get out of bed and last thing at night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you have. And anytime a negative thought comes in, literally picture yourself kicking it out. Positivity only in your head is ginormous. Mm -hmm. Add more daily movement to your life. Our society now is, it's so easy to sit and sit and sit. You can get everything by just using your phone. Go out for walks in nature. Breathing fresh air is so important for your mental health. Um, where it seems like there's so many people struggling with mental health these days. Exercise is a great antidepressant. And it doesn't have to be strenuous. Getting out for a walk a few times a day, get a dog. If you don't have a dog, grab a friend. But making sure you move your body. Our bodies are meant to move. They are not meant to sit. Mm. And lastly, it seems so silly. Sleep more. 
please set, I've had to tell clients to set an alarm to go to bed because with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, I mean, it's, there's so many great shows out there, but really sleep is the number one thing we can do for our health. The next day is determined by how you sleep. And if you want to, you know, track your sleep, there's a gazillion different trackers out there. Know what works for you and try to get that most nights of the week. It's not going to happen all the time, but it really does make such a big difference for your health. Mm. It's actually funny because five, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, no one was talking about sleep. No one was talking about needing sleep. And now it's like, I think it's one of the most important things that people talk about. And because it's actually, if anyone's listening and they don't, they still don't think it's that important, it actually renews your cells. So if you're sitting there as a woman going, oh, I've got extra wrinkles and why do I have all these extra wrinkles? Just getting more sleep can help with that. So well, I think it used to be a badge of honor. Like I only got four or five hours of sleep, like when you were younger yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and as you get older, like, no, 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 you need to get more. It's not a bad thing to get more sleep. It's a good thing. Yeah. And if you are working from home at midday, you need a 15 minute nap. Oh my gosh, that'd be great. Take a, take a little nap. That does not mean you're lazy. It means you're taking care of yourself. Actually, it's funny when I was pregnant, uh, when I had my daughter, even then, so it's really, I've only been hearing about sleep really, really recently because even then I was sort of like, oh everyone tells me to sleep when she's sleeping or like just get some sleep and even then like three three and a half years ago I was feeling guilty whereas now it's like when uh, the other day I was like to my daughter I need to fall asleep she's three and a half I said I need to have a 10 minute sleep and anyway later on like two days later I was looking at my phone and I realized that she'd actually videotaped me she'd worked out how to turn on my video camera and I was sleeping and she's like recording me going mommy mommy are you asleep and I'm like completely out of it so now I, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I get to sleep during the day if I need to. Smart. I'm amazing. I mean, to learn that at such, I mean, you're, you're young, so at such a young age is great. And I have proof because now my daughter's going to be off. But yeah, so sleep, I, I love that. Yeah, sleep is something that we all need more of. Pam, you have been fantastic and I'm going to leave in the show notes your website. If anyone's listening and they haven't seen you, they have to go and check you out and you've got lots of great videos on your Instagram. You have videos on your YouTube as well. I'm going to put some links as well if you can send me through the exact links of what you spoke about, different playlists for stretching and we'll put that in the show notes as well so people can watch those videos and your recipes are to die for so everyone needs to try those as well but Pam you've been fantastic and I'd love to have you back again at some stage because um you're definitely someone who is walking the talk so you know it's great to see it's been so much fun to talk to you today thank you so much thanks Pam and thanks everyone for watching until next week bye